Sonic and Mario, gaming's biggest frenemies. Probably, I mean, you, you can't get too much nicer these days than these two. Still, I would say gaming's biggest rivalry, rivalry, but just not as big as it was back in the day. Obviously, because these two, you know, they play sports together and stuff like that. But back in the 90s, this rivalry right here couldn't have been more heated. And in case you're wondering why Mario looks like that, that is his classic form, okay? This rivalry right here couldn't have been more heated. I'm talking bitter hatred from both sides. You had the Sega fans with with Sonic representing them, and you had the Nintendo fans with the Mario representing them. These two despised each other. I'm talking bitter hatred. Hatred from these two. I'm talking about playground fights breaking out right just cast your mind back actually don't cast your mind back that far if you weren't born then because you you know you'll see you'll see some things that you don't want to see okay i stole that joke from ashens okay but let's just get right into this video okay this today we're going to be looking at martin sonic bootlegs right for the nintendo entertainment system okay now next later on this week I'm thinking Wednesday, we're going to do the opposite, okay? So today we're going to be looking at Sonic bootlegs on the NES. Well, next week, we'll be looking at Mario bootlegs for the Master System. I mean, later on this week, not next week, we'll be looking at Mario bootlegs for the Sega Master System. So join me. Slayers, I'm the world's coolest Sega enthusiast, Sega Slayer 64, and welcome back to a new video. Now, if you can't tell, that first part was actually recorded on my phone, and this part is recorded on my PC. I'm going to start doing that for certain videos now, but anyway, we'll, let's just open this up full screen right here. Today, we are going to be looking at none other than, none other than... <laughs> Sonic bootlegs for the Nintendo Entertainment System. I know, probably the only time you'll see the NES, the actual Nintendo Entertainment System, on my channel. I know, I can't believe it, right? You, you, you excited? I'm excited. Okay. But no, that's besides the point. Today, we're going to be looking at these bootlegs, okay? And not only just one. Not one, because I was originally just going to do Somari and call it a day. But no, it turns out I found a bunch. And these aren't even half of what I found. I found a lot more. So maybe one day I'll make a part two to this video or something like this. But I figure, this, uh, let's focus on some bootlegs this week. Quality, quality bootlegs, okay? Because who doesn't love bootlegs? I love them, you know what I'm saying? I posted uh, last week. Last week we did two videos based around nothing but bootlegs, okay? We had the... Uh, we had the uh, the uh, the Sonic bootlegs for the Game Boy. We had the um the bootleg uh, n uh little Sega Genesis handheld. And this week we got first up Sonic bootlegs for the NES. And then um, Wednesday we'll be taking a look at Mario bootlegs for the Sega Master System. So all the other way around. But I have not one, but two, three, four, five, six. A total of six bootlegs for you guys. I, I I I don't know what else. I don't know what else you want. What more you want? Okay. What more do you want from me? Because we <laughs> let's just get right in. I think I think we obviously have to start right. We obviously have to start with Somari because this is the one everyone knows. Okay, everyone knows Somari. What? Okay, everybody knows what Somari is. I'm gonna assume everyone knows what Somari is. If you, if you aren't like me and you are an actual cultured person, so that means you don't watch. That means you don't watch Vine Sauce. You won't know what this is. But this is a bootleg of Mario. I mean, of. Okay, let me explain. Okay, so during the early '90s, right, the two biggest mascots at the time. Or just the two biggest video game characters in general were Sonic and Mario. Okay, so how do you capitalize on both Sonic and Mario while making money? Okay, 
So this would have still been like what I'd say 92 because the spin dash is in this game. So that means Sonic 2 was out. So I'm gonna say this would have been like Sonic. So this would have been like 1992. I want to say right. So how do you capitalize on both characters and get you a nice penny? Well, you release um. Well, you si it's simple. You take a game, you take the most popular console, well not the most popular console, but the most owned console at the time, which would have still been the NES, right? And, and, and you simply, you make a game for that system, right? A Sonic game for that system, but no, no, no. See, here's what you do. You don't actually release a Sonic game for the system. No, 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 no. You, my friend, you take a, a Sonic game, but replace Sonic with Mario, okay? Gold. People are now people are gonna get tricked into thinking this is a Sonic and a Mario game. Okay? So when people or kids, most likely kids, see this at a flea market and go buy it, boom, you've got profit. And and that and that's what a pirate group does. And this is what a group in inside of China somewhere does in the 1980s, and we get so Mari. Here we go. Perfect, okay? I mean, you, 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 you gotta love the NES's color palette here. Because, uh, you know, obviously Sonic 1 was a very vibrant game, you know what I'm saying? That was one of its big selling points. It looked extremely good for the time on the Sega Genesis. And so, and so the NES, um, yeah, it can't really do all that. So we got, uh... We got half-baked Mario sprite here on top of half-baked Sonic artwork here, okay? It works perfectly. No, it does not. This game controls terribly. Mario does not, like, he, he doesn't, he he kind of just stops randomly. Like, he, he, he has no, like, actual, like, he doesn't really build up momentum. I guess that's what you could say they tried to implement. It didn't work so well. No, 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 no. See, you try and run in this game, right? And, like, Mario will randomly just stop in his tracks out of nowhere, right? Like, out of nowhere, and then he'll just decide, you know what, nah, I'm not going anymore, and so he won't do that. Obviously, you got the spikes. Jumps here are kind of, the controls aren't slippery. I'm not going to say they're slippery, because they're not tight, but they're not slippery either. They're just very, like, stupid controls. Like, he, Mario feels like, okay, he feels unnecessarily like a tank. Like, he just, he's very sluggish and moves very slow. So, it kind of makes it a little bit hard to make certain jumps that should have been made easier. Especially later on in the game. Like, you would actually play this later on. But yes, this is a full game. This isn't like a half-baked demo or anything. This is a full game. And I'm curious to see because I haven't played past Green Hill Zone. But I used to see this when I was younger on YouTube, right? And, um... <laughs> I, there was one point, I'm not even going to lie to you, I thought this was a real game at one point, but that was like when I was very, very young, like I was very small, I had thought this was a real game, but no, it it is, it was, it is not a real game, this right here, this would never be a real game, I can't see anyone in their right mind releasing this, and this is Death Pay, oh wait, I forgot, I have a rewind feature, classic, classic Sega Slayer, I can't see anyone in their right mind actually sitting here releasing this. Like, who thought this was a good idea? Who approved this? Matter of fact, who approved this and said, okay, you know what? We're going to release this. I'm a pirate or no pirate, man. Have some dignity. This is the worst game I've ever played. And I've said that for a lot of things, okay? But this is truly one of the worst games I've ever played. Mario does not con... Like, one second he'll go super slow, but then the next he's he, he's he's the fastest thing alive. I, I, I can't tell you what is going on here. How did we even die? See, now, uh, you know, I usually, you know, I, I do appreciate this NES uh, um, emulator's uh, generosity when it comes to rewinding. Because it just means that I can actually fairly show you this crap. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, look, here's the boss. It actually has bosses. Now, you can see, now you can see it doesn't work properly because the NES was can't handle uh, this, this type of uh, punishment. And you see what I'm saying? It's kind of hard for me to move away from Robotnik because of the fact that the control Mario moves so slow it's kind of hard for me to even get away or even catch up to my ring so I'm am I just screwed there let's see what we can do okay let's just wind past that then you can see the life count the flickering is just happening it's getting on my nerves
Oh, come on. That's so stupid. Okay. Now, isn't this just stupid? See, he can't properly hop over the, um... It's like he can't properly hop. If, if you know what I'm saying, he just can't properly jump because he controls like such a tank and it's kind of annoying to try and actually play the game this way. Ooh, okay, we just, I think we, I think we got one more hit. Let's just go crouch down here. One more hit? Dang, how many hits does he have? Oh my god! You're gonna tell me we haven't hit eight yet? Dude. See, right there was a point where Mario just didn't want to hop, and I couldn't do anything but turn back. There he goes. And we beat the game. That's a lie. I wish we beat the game. So, Mari has passed Act What? Marvel Zone? Marvel Zone? Marvel Zone! <laughs> oh man you okay you look at this little animation oh my god you right you expect me right to sit here Right? Right? <laughs> and play Marvel Zone? Of all zones, Marvel Zone? In a Sonic the Hedgehog NES bootleg. And you just genuinely expect that's what I'm gonna do. The literal meme of my channel that I hate Marble Zone. I made multiple videos and top tens about it. Would you look at that? Just look at that right there. You see Mario's face up here? That is Mario's face. That is why that's why his face has always been up there. That is why. Because of um because of this game. They at least they got that part right. And you would just genuinely expect me to sit there and play this. Well, you'd be right. I'm going to go ahead and do it. Okay, look. I hate Marvel Zone. We, we know that by now, okay? We know I despise Marvel Zone. I've made multiple videos on it. I'm sure I'll make multiple more in the future. But I, I have to show it off, okay? Oh, my God. And it's even freaking worse than the original. Oh, my God. Yes, it is actually freaking worse than... It's worse than the original. Wow. That is actually hard. It is extremely hard for you to actually be worse than the original Marvel Zone. But this game manages it. How does it do it? Why does it do it? I, I can't tell you. I guess the NES couldn't handle like the pushy blocks things. Because they tend to not be here for some reason. You know how you have to like push the blocks. I guess the NES can't ha couldn't handle that. So they didn't put it in. Also man can we just look. Yeah okay I guess the NES couldn't handle the moving blocks either. I'm not complaining. But then again, yes I am, because I told you, Samari, he doesn't always want to jump fully. His jumps don't... See, like, right there, that was a point where he wants to jump slow. Right here's the point where he jumped slow. But then he'll eventually see, now he's jumping. Okay, it's it's a weird pattern that he does, and I hate it. Well, that was completely unfair. That was completely unfair. I'm just going to say everything's unfair every time I get hurt. Okay. Unfair. I mean, these controls are so poorly done that it's just... There we go. First stage done. That's it for Somari. Okay, I think we get the point right now. It's a crappy Sonic bootleg with Mario. Now, to get a different game, right, we're going to have to play this game called Sonic the Hedgehog Somari Hack. Now, this one right here is interesting. Not really. This is just Somari again, but what somebody else did, someone else actually took and did this. This wasn't the original developers, right? This is, they took Somari, right? 
hacked so they took Somari, right? They hacked Somari, and what they did was instead of giving you Somari, they just replaced the Mario with Sonic, okay? Which I uh, I guess makes sense, you know what I'm saying? At least they actually replaced him with Sonic. Now, this right here is funny because this game right here, right? I saw this when I was a kid, right? This was the game I saw. I didn't see the original Somari till I actually got older. But like this right here, I had saw this like way back when I was a kid, like when I first got YouTube. When I first discovered what YouTube was, this is I had saw this, and the reason I saw this was because this is what I knew to be Sonic 8-bit. I thought this was Sonic 8-bit, right? So this is obviously Sonic on the NES. So I thought this is I thought Sonic had an NES port. That's what I actually thought, and I thought it was this, and I thought it was official too. No, this is actually a port uh, a ROM hack of Somari that just replaces the Somari character, but with actual Sonic. Does it make sense? Yes. Did they fix anything else? No. This game sucks still. And all. And for some reason, you start out at Spring Yard Zone. I don't know why, but it makes sense because we just beat Marvel Zone, kind of, on Somari. So why why you start out here, of all places, is very weird. But you do. Uh, yeah, it's just, like I said, it's just a ROM hack of Somari, but with Sonic the Hedgehog instead of Somari. I don't know, maybe someone back in the 80s, found, I meant back in the 90s, found the original Somari, decided, you know, that was pretty stupid, they might as well have just put Sonic in, and did it themselves, or, or either that, or they sold the both game, either that, or both games were sold together, so that they could maximize their profit, you know what I'm saying, trick a few people, and, and get rich off of it, okay, well not get rich of it, because I don't see anyone getting rich off of something like this. I don't know what they oh, I don't know what they were go shooting for, but there you go. Sonic has passed Act One. That's all this is, okay? Nothing, nothing else special. This is that's exactly what this is. This is a hack of Somari that just replaces Somari with Sonic. Now we have this one, Super Sonic Five. Let's play this, okay? I'm so. This is a 1997 game. Hold on. This actually tells you the year this came out. Which would have been 1997. Keep in mind, 1997. This is the last year of the Saturn in America, at least I think. Or was it last year of Saturn in Japan? No, yeah, last year of Saturn in America. This was the last year of Saturn in America. Okay. So keep in mind, this is it. Okay. This comes out right. This game right here comes out in 1997 for the NES. Okay. Now keep in mind. Hold on. Let's just pause this for a second. Let's just pause this for... I'm just going to uh, pause this for a second because I could... Okay. This, let's pause this. This comes out, right, in 1997, okay? I want you to keep in mind, the NES was dead, dead. Like, the NES had been dead for years, pretty much officially. I think the last NES game was Yoshi in 94, right? The last official NES game, I think, was Yoshi in 94, if I'm not wrong. I might be right. I might be wrong. Uh, but I think that was the last official NES game was Yoshi, right? So at least uh, first party, last official first party game I think was Yoshi, right? For the NES, right? Okay. This is 97. So you made a bootleg NES game, right? Of Sonic and Knuckles, right? For the NES in 1997. The Dreamcast was about to hit next year in Japan. The Saturn was on its last year. The PlayStation was still going strong. The N64 was doing okay at this part, starting to pick up pace at this point. Pretty much doing already up to pace at this point. And the um and the uh Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis were finally starting basically already rolled into the sunset, but they were truly truly riding into the sunset right now. You know what I'm saying? They were pretty much already gone, but they had like a couple more games still coming out for them. So, okay, why would you release this for the NES? The Master System, I could have seen you releasing something like this for that because it was still going strong in Brazil. Same with the Genesis, but in the US, of all places, you released this crap? Now look, why didn't you just release this for the SNES? It had been cracked wide open by this point. The Sega Genesis, been cracked wide open by this point. 
Heck, even the freaking Game Boy would have been better than this. Why did you choose the NES? Why did you choose the NES? Okay, but, I, you know, okay. And why did you choose Sonic and Knuckles of all things? But, hey, who am I to complain, okay? Let's unpause this. Let's just resume this. And here we go. Sonic and Knuckles 5, okay? <laughs> now, as for what happened to Sonic and Knuckles uh, 1 through 4, you let me know, because the only thing I know about is Sonic and Knuckles on the NES. Uh, uh, I mean, Sonic and Knuckles on the Genesis. But anyway, yeah. Sonic and Knuckles 5, and this was a real game that came out in 1997. It's just so Mari, but with Sonic, again. No Knuckles, by the way. There's no Knuckles in the game. It's just the same old game we just played, right? But instead of it being an, a ROM hack, this is what it was. Any more questions? Want to see some more? No? Okay. Like, literally, this is all you get. You don't even get a character selection. You don't get anything like that. It's just so Mari again. But it starts up there instead of there. We're done with this game, okay? So let's open the next game, okay? Now, this one right here, I'm excited. Because look, guys. Sonic 3D Blast 6. We found it. Now, some of you might remember. If I just exit this real quick. I'll just I'll exit really quick. Some of you might remember if I go over here and open up my Game Boy emulator. And I go to files. I go to a little raw. Some of you might remember, if we go down a bit, that we took a look at this game right here. Sonic 3D Blast 5. You guys remember this? I remember it. Whoa! It looks like we finally got ourselves, boys. I made a joke, but hey, we finally done it. We finally done it, okay? Cancel, yeah, so we'll do that later. Look, boys, we finally done it, okay? We finally got ourselves, if I can open it up fully, we finally got ourselves Sonic 3D Blast 6. I made a joke about it. I guess the pirates went back in time, heard what I said, and decided, you know what? Let's go ahead and open up Sonic Blast 6. Let's go ahead and make Sonic 3D Blast 6. I'm excited, okay? Because they actually heard me. And they at least made it on a system that has color and sound. Sonic 3D Blast 6 on the NES. Let's go. Hey, you can see it's the Sonic 3D Blast menu, but hey. Again, 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 with the Marble Zone crap. It is just Somari again, but this time, oh no, but this time, right? Look, this time, it, it, they, they put a Sonic 3D Blast coat of paint over it. And don't forget, they changed out some Somari for Sonic, and uh, yeah, they, start, they started you out at Marble Zone instead of... Uh, Green Hill Zone, here we go again. New Game Plus. <laughs> uh, we're just going to go ahead and close this out, okay? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I was excited for you. You know, when I saw this, I was so excited for this. And yes, I did try all these games. To be honest with you, yeah, I did try all these games out before. But for real, that's four games now. And I'm not trying to drag that anywhere. Leave it right here. That is four games now, right? That have all had the same game. Two on one family kid in Aladdin. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, super game. This was a double pack game that you could have found at the oh, flea market, I'm guessing. You know what I'm saying? You get two games here. You get Aladdin 4 and Family Kid. Let's just start out with Family Kid. Family Kid. Oh, it's made by Family. Um, family. Green Hill Zone? It's Somari again. But this time with family. And this was a real NES game you could have found. So, hey there. So, you're clearly seeing this part of the video at the halfway point. This little OBS part. And this was not meant to be in the video. 
let me explain. So from the point on that you're about to watch, from this point on, right, it's either going to be a voiceover or a re-recording. And I'll explain that at the beginning of the re-recording if it's a re-recording. But if it's a voiceover, you know why. Half of my audio didn't record. Half of the video audio up until this point that you're seeing what this part I'm talking right now, up until this point, the video audio was all original audio. Well, half of that audio I discovered last night, half of that audio I recorded was messed up gone corrupted for whatever reason and so i have to either voice this over or re-record it i'm gonna decide right now as to what i'm gonna do but yeah that's also the reason as to why you're seeing this video way later than what you should have been seeing it considering if i get it out still today which is monday as i'm recording this right now which is the day you're supposed to be seeing this video if i still get it out today that's why you're seeing it late but yeah, so just wanted to let you know that th from here on out, it's either going to be a voiceover or recording, a re-recording of me. That being said, enjoy the rest of the video. Okay, so yes, this is definitely me having to re-record this whole thing. It, it's funny, it really is. You know what I'm saying? Because see, if you would have, if you would have known, I recorded this whole video yesterday. Yesterday, being Sunday. It is now Monday. The whole video, half of the video screwed up, okay? So we were on, which one were we on? We were on two-in-one family pack, okay? This was the one we were on when the video um, corrupted yesterday. So now, I have to finish this up really quickly, you know what I'm saying? Finish this up for you guys. Then, re-add this in the video and hopefully pray that the audio does not corrupt. Now, I don't understand how the audio, I can't really tell you how the audio corrupted or why the audio corrupted. Only thing I can tell you is that the audio corrupted. I don't know why. But let's get right back in. So I, as I was making a joke about how it says family and this is family kit for the NES. Some type of, um, yeah, it was, so essentially what this is, and I explained this yesterday, but essentially what this is, is another hack of Somari. But instead of Somari, you get this ugly guy named Family Kid. I don't know. Now, originally when I saw this, I thought, right, to myself, right? I thought to myself that this guy right here was definitely... I thought this was going to be like an Alice Kid clone, which makes sense because he was the mascot for the Master System. But no, it was whatever this is. I don't know, I don't know who this family character is or why they decided to replace him, replace Somari or Sonic with him. I... I, I, I don't I don't know what the point of this is, but like, I mean, I mean, family has to be some type of weird Chinese company, right? We know that we know that for sure that they are some type of foreign weird Chinese company. I actually think it's pretty cool though the name family. I I, I like how their family. If we rewind. It's going to take us a little, never mind, you know, no, we're not going to rewind. I actually like how their company name is like, uh, like, a, they try to do like a, a rip-off version of the Sega logo with just family. I mean, they didn't add the song, but that, I mean, that still would have been cool. I, I want to do more research into this family kid character. I want to see if he was in more games, if there was anything else about him that we don't know about. I, I'm curious as to... You know, I'm curious as to what is his what is his backstory? What is the company behind his him his their backstory? I'm curious as to all of this, you know what I'm saying? So, and I explained this yesterday when I recorded, you know, obviously this whole video before the audio corrupted and I'm re-recording it this morning. So that's why the video's coming out late. But yeah, I just I th I think this character here is really interesting and I don't understand I mean, I don't know, I can't tell you why they, you know, just the thought, let's just take Samari of all games and swap out Family Kid. Like, why didn't they just take a real copy of Sonic 1 on Genesis or Master System? Because if you needed to do it 8-bit, why didn't you just take the Master System? I know why they didn't just take the Master System money, but still. It's like, well, I mean, you still could have made money, just not that much here in America. But, like, still, why... Why this game of all games? Like, you could have took... Why didn't you just take Super Mario Bros. 1 and change that out for Family Kid? Why did you take this game right here? And then expect people not to know it was Sonic. Like, at this point, I'm pretty sure everyone, even Nintendo fans, knew how Sonic played. Because you could see, you know, Sonic was at Kiosk. They had the two systems next to each other pretty much in almost every shopping mall for you just to sit there and see them. 
there's no way a kid didn't know at this point what um Sonic was and what Mo the Super Mario World was. You made your choice. So why would you really want Sonic on your console? I don't think they would have wanted him on their game console. But, I mean, at the same time, this company right here thought it was a good idea to release this garbage. I mean, it, it doesn't do anything, but it's, it's already... I mean, we already know it's garbage because 99, all, almost all of these just take Samari and rip and switch it out for some other garbage. You know what I'm saying? Some other crap. That's all they do. And, and here we got family. Now, I'm sure some of you guys are wondering. You know what I'm saying? Some of you guys are wondering, and you know, I'll oblige you. What is this other game? Now, again, I talked about this in my the first recording of this whole video yesterday and i know i keep talking about that but come on man i have to re-record this in the morning i was supposed to have this video out by 12 today not now because half the audio messed up yesterday but anyway aladdin 4 you're probably wondering what this is now you can see this is just called, it says 1995 copyright. So that goes to show you, guess what? This game, this game right here, hold on. If I can, re I'm rewinding real quick, just give me a second. Here we go. That goes to show you that this game right here, a family kid and Aladdin, at least these two right here were put on this one multi cartridge and at least 95, at least 95, right? Maybe later on, maybe even later than that, but at least 95, we know that this was put on this cartridge. Was it made in 95? I'm not sure. Probably, though. I'm going to take a guess and say, yes, it was made in 95 because of the fact that the spin dash is there. But anyway, what is Aladdin for? I'll tell you what Aladdin for is. Aladdin for is actually just Aladdin for the NES. They just edited that 4 there. That 4 is not supposed to be there. If we click the game... You can tell it's just Aladdin for the NES. That's all it is. Nothing special. Nothing amazing here. And this game already right here already wasn't as good as the Genesis or Super Nintendo games. And it definitely wasn't even as good as the Master System. The NES version, I would say, besides the Game Boy version, the NES version is probably my least favorite version of this game. It's not that good, okay? It moves very slow considering it's an 8-bit console, but at the same time, the Master System version moves extremely fast for an 8-bit console. I know it's a little bit more powerful than the NES, but still, this is a this is not a very good version of Aladdin, at least in my opinion. But that's not we're not here to talk about Nintendo games, okay? We're here to talk about Sonic ripoffs on the NES, okay? So that's 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 pretty much the end for this right here. Yeah, it's just Aladdin for the Sega Genesis. You've seen it before a million times. You 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 know what it is. You know how to play it. There you go. Just Aladdin. Now we're gonna go ahead and switch to our last one, which is actually Doraemon. Now I'll explain in a little bit more detail why um why Doraemon is here. So you can see this game right here. But before we get into anything, I'm going to pause. And the reason I'm going to pause is I did this yesterday in yesterday's recording of this whole video. And I'm having to re-record this late part right here. But, okay. I'm going to stop now. Okay, I'm going to stop. No, um, this part right here, right? This, well, this game right here is called Doraemon something. It's just called Doraemon, right? Now, this was released on the Japanese Famicom. Now, let me make this clear. Doraemon. Now, some of you might not know who Doraemon is, and I'll, you know, I don't blame you if you don't. He's a pretty obscure character. I obviously know who he is. Now, Doraemon is a is a Japanese comic book character who spans way back to the 60s, 70s, maybe even the 80s. Definitely, I think he might even go back to the 50s, if I'm being honest with you. He's a very popular character in Japan, and he started out as a comic book. In fact, he used to have, here in America, right, I'd say in the early 2010s, so somewhere between like 2012 to 2014, he had a show on Disney XD. It was called Just Doraemon, and I loved it, that show. And I don't know if the show was based off the, his comic books or any of the other countless media he's been in over the years in Japan. He's like Japanese Mickey Mouse, if I'm being honest. They throw his face on everything in Japan. And I used to love his TV show that came on Disney XD. 
It was just called Doraemon. I used to love it. I used to wait for it to come on, come on all the time. And when it did come on, I would just binge watch the show. It was a really good show on Disney XD. In fact, I recommend you check it out if you want to get a little bit more familiar with Doraemon. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, he's a very popular Japanese character going back years. He has games on pretty... I mean, you can find a Doraemon game on almost anything. That's genuinely being honest. Look for one on the NES, you'll find it. Master System, you'll find it. Game Gear, you'll find it. Genesis, you'll find it. Saturn, Nintendo 64, PlayStation, doesn't matter what it is, you'll find yourself, I promise you, you'll find yourself a Doraemon game on the system. He is so popular in Japan, they love the man over there. In fact, he, he used to be on some uh, tofu here in America too, he was pretty, he's not that popular over here, I mean he is kind of popular, but he's not that popular as he is in Japan, like Japan he's an icon over here in America, he's just a, a Japanese import character we see all the time on a lot of things, but I'm sure, okay, I'm going to be honest with you, I, you might not know who he is, but I'm sure you've seen his face somewhere, Doraemon, look, Doraemon, they put Doraemon on everything, okay, uh, in Japan, like, he used to be, there was some weird Japanese import tofu that we had in my grocery store back when I was younger, and I would always see it, I stopped seeing it, like, a few years ago, but it would always be in the weird vegetable section, and it would always be some tofu, and it would have, uh, Doraemon's face on it, and I remember seeing that, and I, I remember it clear as day, I don't see it anymore, but Dorai, yeah, they put Doraemon, it's safe to say, they, he's a very popular character in Japan. So, him being a very popular in Japan, right, he's very popular, kids love him, uh, kids and adults alike. Someone in Japan saw Sonic the Hedgehog, right, and they decided, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to make a Sonic the Hedgehog rip-off for, um, this is, now I read this online, I don't know which the website that I read this on. This is just what I read this on, so don't take this to heart. But this is what the story is, supposedly. Somebody, you know, saw Doraemon's popularity in Japan, and they made this right here. And this right here was originally, it is its own original game, but not technically. It is an extreme ripoff of Sonic the Hedgehog from the Spin Dash to the, you know, the Hop and the Rings. It's a ripoff of Sonic the Hedgehog. You can see the, even the little Doraemon face in the bottom. It is a ripoff of Sonic the Hedgehog, but what it actually is, well, it is a ripoff of Sonic the Hedgehog, but it's made from scratch for the NES. Now, so Mari, you know, the game we first looked at, so Mari, like, if I show you real quick. So Mari, this right here, this is a ripoff. I mean, this is a ROM hack, right? Look, see? This is this is just from what I've seen, but this is supposedly a ROM hack of that Doraemon game, okay? And someone took it and turned it into Sonic the Hedgehog. Now, does that make sense? Yes, it makes perfect. I mean, to be honest with you, it does make sense. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if it's just called Doraemon Ch. You see, just I can't tell you anything about this game. I mean, what's it called or whatever? I don't know what it's called. You can see it right there. Waxing Computer Science and Technology Co. I don't know what year this was made. We have to know. The one thing we do know is that this was made sometime after 92. Sometime either during or after 92 because Doraemon has the spin dash and Sonic didn't have the spin dash until 1992. So we know this is definitely made sometime after Sonic 2. That, that much we know, right? But yes, this was a Famicom game because Doraemon was very popular. And someone took that family game, that, um, this Doraemon ripoff. And what they did was they just took it and replaced the sprites with Mario and called the game So Mari. You know what I'm saying? That's what they did. Although, and Doraemon still suffers from the problems I said yesterday about how, like, weird and slow So Mari is. He suffers from those problems still. But, I mean... What, I mean, what, what more can you say? It's a Doraemon ripoff. It is a... Uh, it's a very interesting little game. That much is to say the least. It is a very interesting little game. In fact, I find it pretty interesting. And you know, for a Sonic the Hedgehog ripoff on the NES, it's not too bad. Other than the fact that, you know, it's definitely better than Somari. Because Somari has some co collision, to pro collision problems. Now, Doraemon still suffers from that, um... That, uh... You know, that slow pace... <laughs> That, um, you know, the problem where he's very sluggish when he jumps and 
or other times he's it's too fast. It's very weird. His momentum is very weird, and how he gains momentum is very weird. But yeah, you can see this is a clear and clear and precise Sonic the Hedgehog ripoff. They're not hiding anything here, spit from the spin dash to the rings. It, it is a very clear ripoff. Isn't an interesting ripoff? Yeah, probably one of my favorite ripoffs, Sonic ripoffs I've seen in a long time. You know what I'm saying? In fact, I'm quite curious as to what the end of this game looks like, so who knows? Maybe one day, right? Maybe one day. I'm not going to say when, but maybe one day I'll do a stream of this, right? And we can, uh... We could go and take a look at uh, the full, um, the rest of the game, the full rest of the game, because I'm curious as to just how this ends, and like, because you know, I can't tell what's going on because it's all in Japanese, obviously. But I'm just curious as to like, what is the, what's the story of this? How does this end? And you know, like, like I said, someone decided to make this from scratch, and so Mari ripped this off. That is what I read online on the random website. I don't remember. I don't know why. I Because I kind of read it quick because I was kind of in a bit of a rush to get this video done yesterday. So I just was, you know, going through um, everything and that was what I happened to come upon when I read that. But anyway, I mean, yeah, that's the story behind this game in general. Is it a weird game? Yeah. I mean, it spawned all those other ripoffs. I mean, every other ripoff was all because of this one right here. And this one, I mean, it's very, like I said, it has, from what I can tell, it, it supposedly has original music. Uh, the graphics aren't that bad. They actually look kind of, you know, for the NES, they're not that bad. These are like, I could, you know, you could maybe mistake these for some uh, early, early Sega Genesis graphics, you know. They don't look that bad. The music doesn't sound that bad either. You know what I'm saying? Hold on. Ooh, this is a bit scary. Oh, yeah, see, no. I mean, I, thank God this emulator, had, this NES emulator has a, uh, you know, obviously has a, uh, a rewind feature because if it didn't, I would probably be screwed. Yeah, I'd say NES is probably the easiest system to emulate that in Game Boy, but, I mean, either way, here you go. You know, the Doraemon, the ripoff. Now, next week, we're going to be taking a look at... Um, Next week, we're going to be taking a look at... And in the original footage, I did go and fight the boss. So, if you want to see what that looks like, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to leave the footage that doesn't have any sound in. So, you can see me fight the boss. Just so you guys can, you know, see what that looks like. But, that being said, that is um the end of this little clip. I'm going to leave the footage in so you can see me fight the boss. And there you go. But, um, yeah, that being said, if you want to see what the boss looks like, it'll be at the end of this video. Other than that, though... Um, yeah, that's Doraemon for the NES, and that's how it was created. I meant for the Famicom. That's how it was created. Weird that it spawned all those very garbage sequels in the end. I don't understand who thought it was a good idea to make a game called Somari. These bootlegs are really terrible. They get worse every day, but I'm actually enjoying and looking at them. When, join me back on Wednesday, though, because we'll be looking back at some Mario Master System bootlegs. That's going to be pretty fun. I'm sure it is, because there's a bunch of those, too. And maybe one day we'll do a part two to this video where we take a look at some more NES Mario, um, some more NES Sonic the Hedgehog bootlegs, you know what I'm saying? Or even just se Sega NES bootlegs in general, because there's a lot of those you know what i'm saying but that being said if you're new here if you could subscribe that'll be really awesome we're trying to reach 300 subscribers and you'd be helping us out a lot make sure to share this video with your friends to become a super slayer i've been the world's cool second enthusiast sega slayer 64 and until next time have a good one slayers and remember enjoy the boss battle at the end of this video that being said i'm signing out enjoy the rest of the video